good to go. All right, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon now. Uh, before I begin, I would like to add that our hearts go out to the Quebec provincial police officer that was fatally stabbed Monday night before while, while performing an arrest. Sergeant Maureen Bro had been on the force for over 20 years, and especially in light of our recent tragedy right here in Edmonton, our thoughts are with her family, friends, and colleagues, and fellow officers. So if we just take a moment to reflect on that. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Nathan Newdorf, and I am the Minister of Infrastructure. I am pleased to be here on Treaty 6 territory, and I also acknowledge the Métis people who share a deep connection with this land. It's so nice to see all of you, and I appreciate you all taking time this afternoon to join us. We uh, did order special weather just to be able to do this outside, and I'm glad to see that that order came through. Uh, the Minister of Health probably will appreciate that as well. This is a great day for Edmonton and for Albertans who need complex continuing care services, either for themselves, for their families, or for their loved ones. I'm thrilled that we'll be soon handing over this magnificent new healthcare facility to Alberta Health Services. While the building is not yet ready for residents, HS will be working hard to open the building in the fall of 2023 with Capital Care as the operator. At just over 38,000 square meters, this facility is a magnificent addition to the Jean Zwazeski Center at Norwood. Once fully complete, there will be 350 complex continuing care and post-acute beds as well as ambulat ambulatory clinics. In addition, there will be support prog programs for Albertans with complex medical needs that require long-term or palliative care. Construction began on this building four years ago, created by highly skilled architects, designers, tradespeople and construction workers who work together with Alberta Health, Alberta Health Services and Alberta Infrastructure to create this incredible building that you are standing before today. With construction of this tower nearing completion, the next steps in this project include renovating the Angus McGowan Pavilion, demolishing the North Pavilion and the Choice Daycare, uh, sorry, Day Centre, and constructing a standalone parking structure for community emergency medical services, vehicles, and a renal dialysis van. This project has been and continues to be an econ economic generator for Edmonton. It has created approximately 2,200 well-paying construction and construction-related jobs to date. At the peak of construction, more than 500 workers were on this site. A good portion of the wages of those workers made stayed right here in the Edmonton area, helping the local economy and the surrounding community. Projects like this one also have a significant long-term impact. They help local businesses and they attract investment to our communities. They provide jobs, attract new people to work and stay in the city, and ensure that Albertans get the best health care when they wear and when they need it. In a few minutes, you'll have the opportunity to also tour the facility. You'll see some of the modern, innovative features that were incorporated into the design and construction. One example is the unique, unique Y shape of the building, designed to provide each and every resident a great view and improve the flow of staff moving throughout the building to complete their work. The Norwood Tower is one of the most modern technology advanced complex care facilities in the province. AHS, together with the operator Capital Care, will soon begin with the process of preparing for health services on the site and will be working hard to open the Norwood Tower to residents as soon as possible. I look forward to joining you in the fall when the Norwood Tower officially opens its doors. Thank you. Now I would like to invite my colleague, Health Minister Jason Copping, to come to the podium. Thank you so much, Minister Newdorf, and thanks for ordering this great weather. I'm glad you came through. Good, after, good afternoon, everyone, and, and thank you all for joining us here today to recognize this significant milestone. I'm incredibly glad to see the construction of the Norwood Tower at the Jean Zwazdeski Center is practically complete, and now Alberta Health Services is preparing for a fall opening. Building a resilient and responsive healthcare system that meets the needs of Albertans is essential to keep our province healthy. This project brings us closer to achieving this goal for people living in Edmonton and the surrounding areas. It addresses the growing need to increase continuing care capacity while meeting the evolving and complex requirements for residents. 
The complex will serve as a hub to streamline access for people needing specialized services at the Glen Rose and Royal Alexandra Hospitals. But more importantly, it will provide a new modern setting for continuing care residents, a place that they can call home. Seniors and vulnerable Albertans deserve access to high quality care and supports in their communities close to their families and to their friends. And that's why as part of budget 2023, we are investing over $4.3 billion in operational funding to meet the growing needs across the province. And this includes nearly $1 billion over the next three years to continue the needed transformation of the continuing care system. And from a capital standpoint, this includes investing $89.5 million for the continuing care capital program in 23-24 alone for a total investment of $310 million over three years to modernize existing continuing care spaces. We have also earmarked capital funding for current continuing care capital projects already underway underway. Projects like the new Bridgeline Riverside Continuing Care Centre in Calgary that will receive $73.5 million over three years and for this project here $90.6 million over three years to complete the Jean Zwazewski Centre to create 145 new and upgrade 205 additional continuing care spaces. This means 350 people with complex care needs will have more appropriate space in familiar surroundings. We know that when residents have access to high quality care closer to their home communities, they experience better health outcomes. Their lives and the lives of their loved ones are enriched. This revitalized and expanded center will offer highly specialized rehabilitation programs, palliative care, hemodialysis, long-term care, day programs, dementia care, and seniors mental health services. This is quite the list, which is why the project is so important. We are fulfilling our commitment to provide seniors and vulnerable Albertans with the high quality care and the supports that they deserve by investing in the care they need in the communities that need it the most. We are ensuring residents have a better quality of life and continuing care, whether it's through home and community care or in continuing care homes like this one. Alberta's seniors and vulnerable population deserve access to high quality care close to their loved ones. We are making investments necessary to transform long-term care facilities into a home with vibrant communities and supports to be able to support Albertans in their golden years so that they are truly golden. So once again, thank you for coming out. Thank you to everyone who's made such a huge commitment to make this project a uh, reality. And now I'd like to call upon Carol Anderson the Chief Operating Officer for the Edmonton Zone to say a few remarks. Carol. Good afternoon. Thank you, Minister Copping, uh, Minister Newdorf, and all of the other uh, delegates who are here today for the opportunity to be here and to bring greetings on behalf of Alberta Health Services. I'm Carol Anderson. I'm the Chief Zone Officer for the Edmonton Zone. And it's absolutely wonderful to be here to mark this milestone uh, for the Jean Zwazdeski Center at Norwood. I would like to congratulate the stakeholders who have been involved with supporting, thank you, the Capital Care Norwood Redevelopment Project. This includes Capital Care, Alberta Infrastructure, Alberta Health, and uh, Alberta Health Services. The Jean Zwazdeski Center at Norwood that you see in front of you is a modern, cutting-edge, purpose-built, community-focused facility and it bridges the transition from acute to community care. It will enable person and family-centered care in within the, uh, the walls and the space and the welcoming environment that has been created. The Jean Zwazdeski Centre will offer, offer the continuum of care with services focused on care in the community, rehabilitation, post-acute and continuing care, which will support the growing need in Edmonton and area for that post-acute and complex continuing care services. This facility will provide a home for community-based research and learning with the unique teaching and research continuing care collabor collaboration between Alberta Health Services, Capital Care, and our post-secondary education partners. 
This will be a comprehensive opportunity for clients, residents, caregivers, researchers, students and staff to work, learn and grow together. The community-based services offered at this site range from the CHOICE program, the GF McDonald Centre for Lung Health, which is operated by Covenant Health, hemodialysis, post-acute, long-term care and hospice services. It truly is a vibrant and vital health hub for the Edmonton Zone that will support our clients and residents to live their lives fully. The Jean Swazdesky Centre will provide new continuing care capacity in post-acute, long-term care and hospice. And when we complete the renovation of the Angus McGugan building, the Capital Care Campus project will be uh, fully complete and we'll have added 145 continuing care beds for the Edmonton Zone, which are really, really critical at this time. The care and services provided at this campus will relieve pressure on our Edmonton hospitals and con the continuing care system and help to reduce the demand for emergency departments, inpatient acute care services and our residential continuing care placement. But really and most importantly, the Jean Zwazdesky Centre at Norwood rep represents an investment in caring for Halbertans who deserve this type of beautiful, functional, warm, welcoming place to live their lives and receive ongoing care and support. As we stand here today, I am grateful for the power of partnerships and the ongoing teamwork that will ensure that this facility is successful in the years to come. I would like to thank our partners in Alberta Infrastructure, Alberta Health and Capital Care who have worked together to plan, design and build the facility. I would also like to acknowledge and thank our campus neighbours, the Royal Alexandra Hospital, the Glenrose Rehabilitation Hospital, our wonderful community partners, including the residents of the Norwood neighbourhood, the Spruce Avenue Community League and the Kingsway Business Association who have been so supportive of this project. And most importantly, the Capital Care Norwood team and the clients, residents and families. Your understanding, patience and support during construction on a very busy campus is greatly appreciated. We're also grateful for the continued support of the Capital Care Foundation and the Stepping Up for Norwood campaign that will provide the funding that's necessary to make the Jean Zwazdesky Centre at Norwood a home and that honouring of the legacy of the uh, Honourable Jean Zwazdesky. Capital Care is a trusted and valued partner in the Edmonton Zone and will operate the facility and work in collaboration with our teams at AHS and Covenant Health to deliver quality care that places our clients, residents and families at the centre of all that we do together. I would like to once again thank and congratulate all who have worked so hard to make this building a reality. It's been a long and winding journey and I look forward to celebrating the opening later this year. I'd like to now invite my colleague, Eileen Wong, the Chief Operating Officer uh, for Capital Care to the podium. Thank you, Carol. And thank you, Ministers Copping and Nudorf as well. It's a fantastic day and I really appreciate everyone being here. It's lovely to see members of our Capital Care Foundation fundraising campaign here with us. They've worked so dil diligently to create support for this building. It really is exciting to be standing here it, with this building in front of us that will soon be the new home for all our residents. In 2017, we could only imagine what this building would become. We were given this wonderful opportunity to build a new modern home for our residents and with our residents. A home that will support us in delivering quality, person-centred care to meet the needs of our diverse community who will live here. There is so much to highlight with the new and modernised spaces and innovative care programmes. I think we can all relate to the excitement when we move into a new home. The potential of a new garden, the view from a new window. And I am so happy for our current residents who have watched this space being built with anticipation and they will soon have a chance to pick out their new room. From the very beginning, the design of this building was meant for residents to feel at home. 
the dedicated gardens for the residents with brain injuries will be life-changing. This also brings continuing care into a modern era. It's a transformational space that will serve the diverse population who need complex long-term care, post-acute care, hospice, dialysis, and community care. And it's a time when society is recognizing that we need to support people across the spectrum of care. We all know the needs of continuing care are evolving, and we are thrilled to have partners like Capital Care Foundation to help us address those needs, as well as Alberta Health and Alberta Health Services. The fundraising that the Capital Care Foundation um, is going towards is supporting our new teaching research training centre. And this will help us to train our staff with a focus on evidence-based practice and continue to build on our partnerships with the colleges and universities. I know our staff, our care teams, therapists, our support staff are focused on creating a full quality of life for our residents. We are incredibly excited that they will have access to modern, state-of-the-art resources. And our residents will have fully supported spaces to continue to live quality of life. Thank you to the Alberta Government for supporting this vision, to Alberta Health Services and also to our Foundation. I know we are all excited for when we can welcome our residents to their new home. Named after a great Albertan, Jean Swazdeski. I'd like to invite Dr. Myron Swazdeski, his son, to the podium. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you, ministers, Alberta Health uh, Services representatives, and our friends at Capital Care. I'm incredibly proud and humbled to stand in front of this building that holds our Diodos, grand grandfather's, name. This centre is poised to be an important institution to continuing care and education through research in our city, Edmonton. My father, Gene, would have been so pleased to see a space dedicated to providing a full quality life for seniors and all of those requiring assistance. This centre, its gardens and family gathering spaces will allow residents and families to build community together. The Capital Care Foundation has been doing amazing work to ensure the spaces are filled with furnishings and artwork. And they have announced that their fundraising will support a teaching and research centre within this building. I know he would have loved that this will also be a space of learning, one where we can continue to build on our knowledge and research to create the best continuing care. His dedication to building uh, a caring community and supporting education are at the center of his legacy. And they're encapsulated by the naming of this center. I remember how much time he used to spend in meetings, on the phone, listening to people and helping people, but also in fostering an inquisitive young mind. He used to ask me questions all the time called short snappers, and I, we'd have to respond in the car with our fake buzzers. But as a trained teacher, he taught me to learn everything. And so I became an educator in medical sciences at the University of Alberta. And my family and I will be very interested to hear about some of the person-centered health research projects at this center. On behalf of the Zwazdeski family, we are so pleased that this center, in the heart of the city that he loved, will stand for what he believed in, caring community and education. Thank you so much for inviting me here today. I'd like to invite Helen Gulovich, co-chair of the Norwood Resident Council, to speak. Gulovich. It's lovely to see everyone today. 
I'm so excited to be in our new home. I'm the co-chairman of the Norwood Resident Council, and I've been a resident at Norwood since December 2018. I remember already being excited at the idea of a new building. We couldn't imagine how it would turn out. That January in 2019, I remember starting to see signs of construction. At the time, I remember being worried about the trees that were being removed. But I soon loved to go to the window and watch as new floors were being built. Seeing the new building today, I love to see so many new windows, open views with sunlight across the building. Sorry. Oh. Sorry about that. And all of the new garden spaces will be able to enjoy. These new rooms are going to be built to accom accommodate us. I'll have my own desk space. It's a sign that these spaces have been built with us in mind and how we will use our own spaces. From the beginning, the staff have worked to keep the residents informed and involved. I'd like to thank Mike, Ryan, Brad, and Olga, and everyone who has worked to involve residents in the process. Thank you for having me here today. Thank you, Helen. Thank you especially to the Zwazdeski family for all of your participation. And of course, for the namesake of this building, for all that he did for Alberta. Uh, we really, I don't know what else to say other than thank you. Thank you to Capital Care and all of your staff and the board of directors that were here that will be huge participants in the operation of this facility. Alberta Health Services and all the other um, agencies involved. And I see some of the contractors, project managers at the back and, and their design team, thank you for getting us to this point today. So thank you for all the speakers today and for everybody who's taken their time to join us here. I would now like to invite uh, my press secretary, uh, Benji Smith, to coordinate a very short uh, question and answer period. I'm sure that uh, the Minister of Health and myself have, are prepared to answer some questions as well as anybody else who spoke today if uh, you could direct your questions to those people. Thank you very much, Minister. So that brings us to the end of our formal event, and we're going to move to the media Q&A. So I'd like uh, media to please keep it to one question, one follow-up. Um, our speakers are happy to take questions, and we'll start on the floor with reporters here uh, before we're going over to the phones. Uh, please use the mic provided just beside the cameras over there. Um, identify yourself and your outlet and to whom you're directing your question. Thank you. Hey there, Lisa McGregor with Global News. My first question would be, uh, obviously I'm sure you have a wait list for people to get into this new facility, or do you? And how is that decided? I'm not sure who should answer this one. Um, how do you go about deciding who gets a space? And uh, do you have an idea of how many people have applied for a space and whatnot? Uh, thanks very much for the question. Um, Alberta Health Services has, has a centralized uh, process that's used to identify individuals who require continuing care services. 
Uh, and uh, in Edmonton, we have a community bed hub that coordinates those referrals and identifies um, the appropriate locations for individuals to receive services. Um, we're a ways away from opening the site, but we do know that we have uh, a demand for individuals who will be supported on the unit that um, is for individuals who use ventilators. Uh, as well as for those that um, are living with brain injury. And truly, uh, we have ongoing need for our post-acute spaces, which is really the way that we support people to recover after they've had a uh, life-limiting illness or a, uh, an admission to acute care and support them to get to their fullest function and home to the community. So um, we definitely need the additional capacity in the Edmonton zone, and we're looking forward to the opening of the site. Do you have a number, a rough number of just how many people are on the list and if there is a wait list? We always have uh, a, a demand for continuing care capacity. I don't have the exact numbers at my fingertips, but we can certainly provide that for you. Okay. Um, overall, uh, just to, for clarity, so today the reason for this press conference is that everything inside is complete. It's just more about other little things like parking and stuff like that to, to finish up. Um, I just want to make clarity on that and then um, in terms of people that are patients or residents that will have a space here, could it be quite long, like it's a living space, I just want to make sure, or is it more, you know, part-time living and just to confirm that. Sure. So the first question on the infrastructure, the inside uh, construction is complete and now it's being transitioned to Alberta Health Services to commission. Um, operational systems for all the different equipment inside as well as moving in beds and chairs and tables all of that stuff as well as uh, eventually towards this fall orientating new staff to the building so they know where to find materials and equipment and all of those kind of things uh, a, a building of this size and 350 beds obviously it takes a lot of time to move all of that in it doesn't just happen in a weekend so that's part of that uh, time frame and then making sure all of the the systems are operational all the staff knows where to go all the fire drills all of those safety measures are trained and in place and then there would begin the time of moving patients in as to your second question about the care of that i don't know if minister of health or hs wants to answer yeah, I'll, I'll start on the second question and then I'll ask Carol too. But, you know, but this is, you know, I, I, I indicated to Minister Newdorf, we, we need a big key for these types of events because typical process is infrastructure does the work and then it hands off to uh, Alberta Health Services to actually make sure that the, you know, the building, you know, actually is going to uh, fit the needs, all the equipment's there, all the staff is trained, which takes a period of time. So that's what we're really announcing today. So next time we'll have a big key and, and you know, everyone will be clear on the, uh, on the process. But it, it is a significant milestone because it's a step along saying the building basically done being handed over to AHS and we can move forward so I'm very excited about that in regards to the program I'm gonna ask Carol just to, to talk up because you know the great thing about this site is not only about um, uh, long-term care right it's also about um, care for individuals who you know uh, who are coming out of the hospitals you know uh, getting getting surgeries done uh, rehabilitation they've been moving back into the community uh, and then actually that'll also improve flow like in terms of impact on emergency departments so it's not just about long-term care and seniors and, and supporting uh, Albertans who are who are vulnerable for a place to live but also a space for those types of programs but Carol if you want to comment more uh, thanks, Minister Newfeld and Minister Copping. Um, in regards to the question about the um, services that are provided here, it's a full range of um, services within the continuing care program. So from a home care perspective, we have the CHOICE program, which is a day program that people come to um, during the day, go to their homes in the evening and receive interdisciplinary care in that location. Uh, we have the post-acute program which um, supports people after they've been in acute care to recover get back to their best level of functioning and then return to the community and then we have long-term care spaces which is um, what mrs gillowich um, was speaking to this is her home this is where she lives and um, the staff and the team here um, provide her with care and services in her home and then we will have uh, hospice services and hospices provide that end of life care uh, for individuals um, in a beautiful home-like um, setting where people can be um, supported to have a quality end of life and uh, be with their family and friends. Okay, thank you. Are there any more questions from the floor? 
Yes. Hi there. Laura Krause with City News. I have a question for Minister Copping. Um, it's off topic, but I was hoping that you could comment on data released by the Canadian Resident Matching Service that suggests that there's 42 unfulfilled family medicine residency positions in the province and what's being done to encourage more young doctors in the province and fill these positions. No, thanks for that. This is the CARMS matching process, which is a national matching process, and and appreciate that you know we have 42 in round one. So just to be clear, this is the first round, and as typical, we'll do multiple rounds in terms of the uh, in terms of the uh, the filling the vacancies. Uh, and, and and frame of reference of the 42 in Alberta, um, this is you know nationally is 351 that haven't been matched either. So it's 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 not uncommon where you, some go unmatched in round one. Um, we we are um, uh, there will be a second round to be able to fill that. And I've also had conversations with department about uh, because even if you look over the last eight years, um, even after the second round, not everybody has been filled. So what else can we do? Like if there's an opportunity for uh, international medical grads if we don't get filled uh, to be able to do that. Now there is some challenges. Um, and, and we actually look at um, you know the challenges in the family physicians, uh, and and that is not only unique to Alberta; it's in other other uh, uh, jurisdictions as well, where you're seeing the matching not. And so we we know that we need to support family physicians. So you know, very pleased that we were able to reach an agreement with the Alberta Medical Association, where we're directing more funding to family physicians and stability funding. Um, very pleased with the work that we're doing with the. Uh, um, maps the modernizing Alberta's primary care system, um, and you know we've got an interim re uh, recommendations from Mass, which we accepted all of them in principle. Um, the a, uh, uh, a final report is coming over the next couple of weeks, and and you know the themes from that is that we need uh, different methods of pay to be able to support primary care physicians. Um, we need different models to support team-based care. Uh, so we've already, as part of Budget 2023, uh, we already earmarked $125 million to actually start moving forward on those uh, those recommendations. We're actually in discussions right now with the AMA in terms of, of how do we actually set up those different models of care to be able to support that. Uh, and, and quite frankly, we have with our primary care networks, and as part of the budgeting we've done as Budget 2023, you know, an addition, you know, additional $40 million as we highlighted in the AMA deal over the next two years, uh, plus as we um, um, as the number of attached Alberta patients come to uh, family clinics, um, we'll actually increase funding for primary care networks. We have a great support mechanism uh, to be able to support that. So, you know, we are going to invest to make this the place that family physicians want to be. Uh, and we're going to continue to work with the uh, uh, with the deans to ensure that we get the matches and if we don't get the matches then uh, we can actually leverage IMGs because we need family physicians uh, in uh, in Alberta. And, I, and then one last comment, we, you know, I was also very pleased uh, with our colleague, uh, Minister Nicolades, we announced the expansion of our U of A and U of C program and our focus is actually primarily, not, not, not not entirely, but primarily on on family physicians uh, and expanding those programs so we can do that and, and train local people, particularly rural folks, to be able to train here and then do their clerkships uh, in their residencies in rural areas because that's where we have a huge shortage. So we are investing heavily in this. So I, I appreciate someone made comments saying that you know um, you know the fact that we didn't match in, in round one. Um, you know, means that there's there's challenges with our system. Well, it's 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 a challenge that we are facing, and it's actually being faced, you know, around the uh, around the country. But we are investing significantly in supporting our our primary care doctors, our primary care system, and more is coming. Thank you. Thank you very much. Seeing uh, no questions from the floor, we'll move over to the phones. Catherine Skowski, Alberta Today. Hi there. First question would be for the Deputy Premier and Infrastructure Minister. Um, so this is a, a new build and there's also the demolition of the North Pavilion and Choice Day Centre. Um, I know there's been some worldwide concern about shortages of raw construction materials such as sand that's used in concrete and glass. And I was wondering what if any consideration um, do you give to uh, the availability of building materials when, when you're looking at building new versus uh, modernizing or rehabilitating an existing building? Well, that's an excellent question. Uh, that is considered uh, during the design phase so that uh, the specified materials both externally and internally are rated for their availability and, uh, and 
uh, appropriate costing. So that's, that will be ongoing for the, the next phase. Obviously, that was completed in this phase. And with every project, there's a, a percentage of contingency built into the budgeting for that. If throughout the course of construction, as we all know, these, these, con these construction projects can take multiple years, uh, there's some escalation and um, contingency built into that to consider that. Now, that's, that's a very specific question as well. So beyond that, uh, I don't have a lot of detail. But that's an ongoing uh, concern, again, across Canada where uh, all projects would be considered uh, for the materials used to make sure that you're using, getting the best value for dollar on what you're purchasing. But uh, Alberta is very, very proud to have a lot of resources, natural resources, including sand and gravel and all of those elements to make concrete and cement. So uh, while it's something we monitor, I don't think it's an overall concern to the outcome of the project. Hopefully that answers your question. Thank you very much. Do you have a follow-up question? Yeah, un unrelated for Health Minister Jason Copping, um, in response to the NDP news conference that was held earlier today, um, one of the things that the health critic brought up is that there is a floor on the number of surgeries at a specific clinic that can be performed. And I'm wondering if, if this is all one public system, why have a floor? built into the contract at, at a chartered surgical facility. So, so uh, you, you hit the nail on the head. It is one all public system. AHS has contracted with, for example, um, in Calgary, orthopedic uh, surgeries um, with the Canadian Surgical S Solutions that contracted uh, 3,000 uh, surgeries to get done. Um, but this is all part of the our initiative to be able to get caught up in surgeries, and and we are making progress. You know, you take a look at if the uh, um, you know adult sur surgeries on the overall wait list, um, it, you know, pre-COVID it was 68,000, it went as high as just under 81,000 uh, after the fourth wave uh, in November of uh, uh, 2021. Uh, it is now dropped down to uh, under 68,000, 67,186. Um, so we are uh, doing more um, uh, surgeries right now. Actually, as of March 27th, we're currently at an average of 115% of pre-pandemic uh, surgical volumes. Uh, so by doing this, that means we're getting the number of surgeries um, that people are waiting for outside of the clim clinically recommended wait times down. And that is coming down. We, we announced that as part of our 90-day uh, report, and, we're, and it's still continuing to drop. So this is, you know, um, this is one system. Uh, AHS has contracted, for example, with a number of charter facilities to perform surgeries that are less complex. Um, than, than the, you know, and because we're doing that, we're actually expanding our volumes, uh, be able to get the wait times down, and uh, we're going to be able to do that in a more efficient manner. Thank you very much, Operator. Do we have any further callers? There are no other questions on the phone at this time. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so let's ask that uh, our speakers please join us at the podium. Uh, this formally announcement, and we will uh, have everyone uh, go back inside to the lobby here to start our tours. Thank you very much, everybody.